Apache Web Server. The Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, was created by Tim Berners-Lee and his team. They proposed the World Wide Web project in 1989. They had a first working version in 1991, and then the RFC that defined it, RFC 1945, was in 1996. However, by the time, many web browsers were already out there and people were using the web. There are multiple RFCs, including 2616, which is for the HTTP 1.1 protocol. The HTTPS protocol, or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, layers the HTTP protocol on top of the SSL and then now TLS protocol. So SSL 3 is the same thing as TLS 1. So basically it's just kind of transferring over to the newer ones. So you want to make sure you have TLS, not SSL. It was created by Netscape Communications in 1994 for the Netscape browser. So the Netscape Navigator browser and used and everyone else started using it. It created an industry for signing digital certificates. So many companies were able to make money off of this, including the uh, Ubuntu project was funded by Mark Shuttleworth, who made his money off of this as well. HTTP security concerns. There are some concerns you should think about. Um, all communication over HTTP is plain text and easily sniffed or wiretapped. People can read it. They can also inject their own stuff into it. Some ISPs are starting to inject ads or JavaScript into your sessions and break things, and that's always nice. Got to gotta know who your ISPs are. Web servers and web browsers cannot prevent programmers from making mistakes or malicious users from exploiting these mistakes. So you have to keep that in mind. The HTTPS protocol also has some security concerns. There are various SSL and TLS protocols with different levels of security. So you need to keep that in mind. If you get a browser that allows you to have keys of size zero, that's not so good. Um, you just need to make sure you know what your browser allows, and if you're running a server, know what your server is serving. Certificate authorities are sometimes exploited and used for further exploitation, so you need to be aware of that. And then government agencies such as the NSA have promoted protocols with secret vulnerabilities, such as random number generators that don't produce random numbers. Some useful packages include the HTTPD package, which provides the Apache web server. You have Lynx, which is a text-based web browser for testing things if you are not running on a, on a GUI environment. Sometimes you want to test things from the server, and Lynx is pretty good for that. Also, OpenSSL, which allows you to make certificates. You can also sign your own certificates. Um, you can get the... Um, certificate signing request you can then use and send to a third party who will sign them for you so open SSL will do that stuff for you mod SSL will allow you to integrate into Apache the HTTPS functionality and then serve secure web pages the Apache web service can be started using system CTL you can use system CTL start HTTPD you can also stop restart check status and also you have this reload option reload is interesting because what it does is it will send a signal to the server the server is then prompted to reread its configuration files and the server is actually multiple servers running and when you send this over the main service can reread the configuration files and respawn new children and then just let the other children, well, kill them off. And then you won't have to worry about it anymore. So you can keep your server running while you change configurations, which is kind of nice. 
there are some other issues. Whenever you want to connect to your web server from the outside, you need to get through the firewall. The firewall is not open by default for the HTTP and HTTPS services, so you need to open those up. You can do that with the firewall-cmd command. You just need to use the dash dash add service equals HTTP or HTTPS options. If you want it to be permanent, you can use the dash dash permanent option as well. And that will make it so the firewall is open and, well, permanently open. You can use the firewall dash cmd space dash dash list all command if you want to see which firewall rules are in place and which services are available so you can know if you will be able to get to the firewall. The main Apache configuration files are found in the slash etc slash httpd slash conf directory. Also you have this etc httpd conf.d directory which has these other configurations such as user directories and SSL configurations. But the most common file you'll work with is the etc httpd conf httpd.conf file. This httpd.conf file is the main file and there is a directive in that file that loads all the other files in the conf.d directory. So in that directory you can, well in that file you can configure your Apache web server, tell it which ports are open, you can tell it whether or not um, it allows certain types of data or other types of pages such as server side includes and CGI. You can turn those things on or off. You can also change which directory index files are used when a directory is, or a file is not specified within a directory. So normally that's index.html, but you can have it be index.cgi, index.php, index.shtml, many different options. So you also have a directory setting in there where you can change where the uh, directory root is, and you can also change your document root. Your default document root is your var www.html directory so you can go there and see your web pages or set your web pages. When you are creating web pages there are a couple of SE Linux context types you should be aware of. The following are some that are used by Apache. You have this httpd underscore sys underscore content underscore t which is used for regular system wide web pages when you're serving web pages for your web server. You can also use CGI scripts and I like CGI scripts a lot and so I think it's very important for me to know the HTTPD sys script exec t type which you have to set on all of your CGI scripts as well as setting your execute permissions or execute bits. If you are not in the normal system directories and you are in user land well, user, all oh, this is user land, but in user, user, home user directories, and you've turned that on in your user dir configurations, then you can use this HTTPD user content T or HTTP user script exec T and keep those in mind. In addition to those types, you also have types for directories, whether or not you're allowed to upload files or not upload files, and so just keep that in mind. Troubleshooting. So when you are having trouble with your Apache web server or web pages, it's good to first verify your IP address is correct. Sometimes it isn't correct. Sometimes you have DHCP, you want to make sure you have a static IP address, or if you're doing DHCP, that's fine too. But verify the services are running. You can use netstat, and you can check to make sure they're there, and listening. Verify the, the firewall is not in the way. You can use the firewall dash cmd space dash dash list dash all command in order to verify the firewall is not blocking anything. Make sure it's open. You can use the se Linux commands. You can use the ls minus al capital Z in order to see the context types of files and make sure they are correct. Um, sometimes this is really important in a situation where you have se Linux running you have all your permissions set correctly and you think a file should be available but Apache just can't see it. So SE Linux. Also that tends to throw up uh, SE Linux 
well errors in the um, audit log so you can go to var log um, audit audit log I believe to look at the audit logs you can also verify to make sure the remote host is up and you can ping it you can use mmap to scan it make sure the ports are open you can also check the Apache um, logs so var log HTTPD and make sure the access log and error logs don't show anything or if they do show something use that to troubleshoot and you can also check system logs and see if you have trouble starting the Apache web server and that is the end for this presentation